So there's a new MacBook Air and a new 13 inch MacBook Pro, and they're both powered by Apple's new M1 chip. And I'm sure you've already heard, they're pretty great. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you that when you compare these two laptops side by side, Apple may have a serious problem on its hands. Before we go on, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos from Digital Trends, including more MacBook and computing content from me. So what we're talking about are easily the two most important laptops to come out in 2020, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Like I mentioned up top, these two new laptops come with the new M1 chip from Apple. And if you haven't been following this story, this is a really big moment for Apple. Apple made chips in MacBooks for the very first time in recent history. And in case you haven't heard, they are really, really powerful and they do some incredible things. I'm not gonna get too far into it because this isn't a review of the M1 chip. Suffice to say, it's really, really impressive what Apple's managed to pull off there, but as it turns out, it hasn't made buying or choosing a MacBook from the lineup any easier. It's actually made it a lot harder. Now, deciding between the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air has never been a clear, easy decision. You can go check out the comparison video I did just earlier this year of the previous versions of these two laptops, where I may have suggested that it was safe to buy one because they wouldn't be updated anytime soon, and I got correctly called out about that. But the point is, the two laptops were very similar at the time, and they still are today. I mean, can you spot the difference between these two laptops? I think the average person on the street might not notice the slight difference in shape where the MacBook Air has that slope down from the screen towards the end of it, and the MacBook Pro has a much more standard flat design. Or they might not notice that the MacBook Air is technically slightly thinner and lighter than the MacBook Pro, but the numbers are really, really similar here, trust me. Honestly, the biggest standout is that the MacBook Air happens to come in gold and the MacBook Pro doesn't. But really, just look at this list of things that are identical between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. The Magic Keyboard, the large force touch trackpad, the limited port selection, which for some reason gives you access to just one external display, the size of the bezels, which are quite large, the size and resolution of the screen, and most importantly, this new chip, the Apple M1. Yeah, that's right. The MacBook Air, which comes in at $300 cheaper than the MacBook Pro, has the exact same processor inside. Same wattage, same amount of cores, the same everything. See, in previous versions of the MacBook Air, Apple chose to use a low wattage Y-series Intel processor, primarily to keep this device completely fanless, which is great. But the compromise, of course, was in performance. You couldn't really do much outside of your basic web browsing and productivity type of work, which is great for some people, but there definitely were limitations on what you could do. But with the M1 MacBook Air, that has completely changed. Think about it this way. The M1 MacBook Air can run non-native applications, meaning it's using emulation to actually run the piece of software just as fast as your kind of basic quad-core ultrabook like the Dell XPS 13, which is a laptop I love. And then when you throw in the number of native apps that have been optimized for the M1, the MacBook Air just blows those other laptops out of the water. And all those same things apply to the MacBook Pro too. The problem is there's just not as big of a performance difference between these two laptops as there used to be. That doesn't mean that performance is identical between these two laptops. The MacBook Pro technically does have a bit more performance headroom thanks to the fact that it has a fan inside. But I gotta tell you, I pretty much never heard that fan spin up, honestly. Even when running some really heavy tasks, the MacBook Pro keeps things very quiet and very cool. The experience of playing a game like Fortnite on this new 13-inch MacBook Pro really was an eye-opening experience because you could get close to 60 frames per second at around medium settings, and you wouldn't hear any fan noise or feel any rise in surface temperatures. So gaming is an area where the MacBook Pro has a slight advantage over the base model MacBook Air, and I could see that being a deciding factor for a very small minority of people out there. But for me, these are not gaming laptops, so that's not a huge deal in my book. Now the MacBook Pro is known as a laptop that can be used for things like Adobe's creative software or Apple's own content creation applications. But in the case of these new M1 MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, 
The difference between the two is almost negligible. I tested it in Puget Bench for Adobe Premiere, and the MacBook Pro is only 5% faster than the MacBook Air. And it's not that the MacBook Pro has gotten any worse, it's that the MacBook Air has gotten that much better from the previous generation. In previous years, these two laptops were separated by as much as 25 to 50% in content creation. That is a huge gap, and it made sense for positioning those two laptops. In 2020, with the M1, it makes a lot less sense. Now there are a couple of small differences between the Air and the Pro that do make the Pro a little more appealing. And the first thing is the display. Both laptops use a 13 inch retina display, but the MacBook Pros is brighter and it's more color accurate. And I know that's gonna be attractive for graphic designers and photographers. Another reason why you might wanna buy the MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air is the touch bar. No, I'm just kidding. That's not at all a reason why you should buy the MacBook Pro. I think I actually prefer the standard function row of keys on the MacBook Air better at this point. Another real thing that the Pro has over the Air is battery life. Now, both of these laptops have insanely good battery life. Some of the best you'll find on any laptop out there, but technically the MacBook Pro does have a slightly larger battery and that does lead to about an hour or two of extra life on a single charge, depending on your workflow. But honestly, that's about it. That's the corner that Apple has painted itself into with the M1. It's so good that the 13 inch MacBook Pro is almost unnecessary. Now follow me with this because it's gonna sound like a rabbit hole but really is important when it comes to the overall strategy of these MacBooks and which of these you should invest your money in. See, when it comes to Apple's other products like their iPhones or their iPads, they release a new lineup every year. In the fall, we know we're gonna get a bunch of new iPhones and hey, all versions of that iPhone, they come with the same processor inside. Even the iPhone SE has an updated processor and that's a much cheaper version of the iPhone. Now, what Apple does do to distinguish these models apart from each other is add in new features, new sensors, new hardware, new ways of using the phone. Even the size of the phone is a good way of distinguishing these factors apart, but performance and processors, that's never been how Apple has played that game. That's not how laptops work, it's not how computers work and it's really not even how Macs have worked in the past. That performance difference between models is super important in telling buyers which device they should choose to best get the work done that they need to get done. So when it comes to the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and using the same processor, that's really a problem. Now there's two ways that Apple can fix this problem. Either they learn to scale the processors so that the MacBook Pro is significantly more powerful than the MacBook Air, or they add some features to the MacBook Pro that make it stand out and make it a really exciting must have product. Like, I don't know, throw in the face ID feature or make the touch bar actually cool and useful. I don't know, just some ideas, because as it stands at $300 cheaper than the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air really is the way to go for most people. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to leave a comment below and let me know which of these laptops you're more interested in buying and why. And I know I've said this before, but I do think it's a safe time to buy a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. I don't think it's gonna get updated anytime soon, hopefully.